Hello everyone, my name is the Ember Knight, or Emma for short. Welcome back to the channel, and welcome to a game called Nightgast. Um, you might notice the background's a bit different, but that's because I have moved set up to the sitting room, back where I used to game, and back where I started my recording. Because big space, and it's just a lot better in here, but... It's not a, that's not a point in this video. Um, yeah, we're playing Night Gas today. I tried to record a game called Insomnis, but that didn't work. Like, I spent like an hour and 30 minutes and only about... Okay, that's a bit of dust on the camera. Um, only about like 55 minutes captured and I thought there's no point in going back for it. Since I know what happens, but... Yeah, I'm just going to get straight into this game. That woman has been staring at me for like five minutes now, so... I have received an invitation from a widow named Mildred Bartgis, who resides in the countryside. She claims that her house became haunted after her divorce. She insists that an entity by the name of Schnabelperchten is angry with her because her house is never clean enough. Perhaps, due to her depression after the divorce, she has become obsessive-compulsive. However, I'm not a psychologist, so I'm not concerned about her mental state. This case is perfect for me, as it holds many paranormal clues. I must search her house to determine whether it is genuinely haunted or not. Right, I absolutely shit my pants. Like, God, that was horrible. That's one of the things I want to mention about this game and another game that I've tried to record, but I'm going to re-record re it because I didn't really get, like, not even, like, two minutes into it. But these, this game and this other game that I will be recording at some point soon, they actually have, like, realistic people. Welcome. I've been waiting for you. You can check every nook and cranny in the house. I wouldn't mind. Be careful, though. My estranged husband could have set up some weird obstructions in the house. Just be cautious. Here is the front door key. In the meantime, I'll be doing some gardening. If you need me, just shout my name, Mildred. Okay. She can be sure that I'd never call for her help. She gives me the creeps. I should mind my own business in the old-fashioned way. Search for clues everywhere. I suppose. Also, if you're wondering, um, I'm in complete darkness so far. I... Complete dark. The only thing to um, light my face up is my Xbox camera. Oh, I thought they had like a, a bigger picture of the smaller picture. Cigarettes. Do, 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 do. I don't know the friggin' um, Doctor Who theme. Ba -do -ba -do -do. I don't know. Probably did it completely wrong there. In the attic, the whispers are louder. Don't look back. Don't look up. I look back. I look up. There is nothing there. Gotta hate old photos. So fucking creepy. Oh, what's this? Two Mildreds. Just happy holidays. It's got blood on it, that's pretty suspicious. Evidence seal. 
chain of custody. Tragedy strikes as husband found dead wife in custody. Tranquility turned to tragedy. Husband fatally assaulted wife in custody. Fairhaven on Avon, 17 February, 17 February, a shotgun turn of events. Reginald C, a 47 year old resident of Fairhaven on Avon, was found dead in his country home. The victim of a violent attack allegedly perpetrated by his wife, Mildred B. Preliminary investigation suggests that the couple was residing at the rural property seeking a peaceful life away from the hustle and bustle of city living. However, tranquility turned into tragedy when altercation escalated, resulting in the ultimately death of Reginald C. Tragedy strikes. Okay, I'm still streaming. I'm just uh, getting worried. What's that? Like on? I don't know how close I am to TV. It's a big ass TV. Maybe I should go down a TV size. Mildred's pendulum. Pendulum, sorry. Oh, yeah, Skyrim bread. Oh, this. I don't know if it stopped doing its noise. I think that's the same photo from before. Yeah, the way I think about this game and the other game, treating Rampage as act of terrorism, the gun epidemic, and be influential. Is that a big eye? No. Yeah, like people can like walk a past here, kind of like um, in the dead of night. I think it's called. I'll put up a picture of what it's called. But I find myself grappling with a sorrow that's hard to put into words. The personal, the person I once called a friend become a shadow of themselves, lost in the darkness that none of us can seem to reach. I blame you, not out of anger, but out of a deep sadness for the path you've chosen. The details of that fearful night linger in my mind, or haunt or remind of the person you've become. I urge you to confront the demons that led you down this dark road. Seek help, Mildred, before the darkness consumes you entirely. Clara. Tea. Very weird. No, I. Uh, I don't know. Some friggin' fall everywhere. Coffee grinding company. What is that noise? Okay. When my character ran for a second there, he wasn't able to run before. Important remnants stew ingredients. Shadow was a fractured soul harvested during the darkest hour. Echoes of distant whispers gathered from the abandoned corridors. I don't think I've probably freaking walked behind his like Tears of solitude, extract from the heartache of a sick conspirator, tainted memories dredged from the depths of forgotten name as a handful of midnight fog storm from the edge of a desolate mass. Direction, harvest fragments of a fractured soul when the world slumbers in its deepest silence. Capture echoes from forsaken corridors into the soft glow of the mountain. See them in a glass vial. Extract tear drops of, tear drops of isolation, ensuring each one holds the weight of a lost spirit. So a snatch a handle of ethereal mist at the boundary of an abandoned graveyard's destination. Combine these haunting elements in a cauldron over, flicker in the candlelight, letting shadow dance over the soup to simmer until it's back to my robot. Premier to the air, whispering secrets of the unseen. Me thinks that Mildred is a bit fucked up. 
room looks a lot lighter. Oh, that's because of the friggin' lights combined. <sighs> oh, so B. What a circle? Oh, I don't fucking trust the wardrobe. Circle is pause. What's got all these friggin' cassette tapes lying around? Medical card. Burbank gossip the summer still used to tell you which bars are set in the pace. The blue eyed sisters are still in the headlines. Okay, you're obsessed with that friggin' fall, like Mildred. I don't really trust you to be on. Why? But whom? Oh, fucking hate it. Up we go. Oh, don't take me in the bathroom. You know, usually most people would say that's a terrifying photo, but that's just what photos looked like back then, so... Voodoo dolls. Okay, but people definitely did not look like that when they were, like... Oh, their fucking eyes, man. It's like it's fine on that perspective, and you shine it in the light more, and it's just like, boom. God. They wear the woods at night for in darkness or the trees have eyes. Never follow the crying woman into the fog, it's a path to the abyss. Mildred? What? Maybe the reason you're thinking there's hauntings around your house is because... Yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm fine. I don't want to do that. Maybe the reason you think, like, before we... Damn it. No, I can still read it. Maybe the reason you feel like there's hauntings in your house is because you've got all this shit up. So that's like terrifying and like. You've got candles and everything. It's just, you know, you're asking for it. You've got voodoo dolls and you've got cauldron magic. It's like. Mildred, what are you doing? Local hospital. Local hospital rocked by a child, child disappearance. Nurse under investigation. In a shocking turn of events. A child has gone missing from the premises of St. Anne's Hospital, plunging the local community into a state of distress and concern. The disappearances which occurred under mysterious circumstances has prompted a thorough investigation, in which one of the hospital nurses emerging as a prime suspect. The incident unfolded yesterday evening when hospital staff discovered that a young patient, seven year old Emily Carter, was unaccounted for during. Bed, routine bed checks. Emily, who had been receiving treatment for a minor ailment, was last seen in her room by a nursing staff approximately two hours before her disappearance was noted. Authorities were immediately notified and an extensive search operation was launched within the hospital grounds and surrounding areas. Despite concerned efforts from law enforcement and hospital personnel, there have been no leads or sightings of the child so thus far. Adding to the gravity of the situation, situation sorry, suspicious have arisen regarding the involvement of one of the hospital own nurses whose identity has been withheld pending further investigation sources close to the ongoing probe suggest that circumstantial evidence has cast a shadow of doubt over the nurse's actions leading up to emily's disappearance we are treating this case with utmost seriousness stated chief inspector marcus reynolds who is leading sorry who is heading the investigation while we are exploring all possible leads including potential abduction scenarios our focus Abduction scenarios, sorry. Our focus is currently centered on individuals who, are, who had direct contact with Emily prior to her disappearance. The news has sent shockwaves for the local community with many expressing disbelief and concern over the safety protocols in the place of the hospital. Parents of other pediatric patients have vo voiced apprehension, demand answers and assurances from hospital administration regarding the security of their children. In response to the Mountain Public Security Hospital, officials have issued a statement reaffirming their commitment to cooperate, cooperating fully with law enforcement, ensuring the safety and well-being of all patients under the care of hearts. Go out to Emily. 
His family, during this distressing time, expressed Dr. Rebecca Hayes, Chief Medical Officer at St. Anne's Hospital, we are fully cooperating with the ongoing investigation and remain dedicated by supporting the authorities in any way we can. As the search for Emily intensifies and the investigation into her disappearance deepens, the community remains on edge, grappling with unanswered questions and fears for the safety of its most vulnerable members. All eyes are now trained on the unfolding development as authorities work tirelessly. God. To unravel the mystery behind the children's disappearances at St. Anne's Hospital. Okay, I'm ready. Whew, just don't be in the fucking mirror, right? Don't. Your violent acts shattered our family, leaving me to navigate a loveless home. Your death brought chilling relief, yet your presence lingers in haunting dreams, Jeffrey. I didn't close it all. Oh no. Right, Mildred, either you took a bath and you went where you went in mud and you forgot to wash it out because that does happen, admittedly. Stuff gets stuck at the bottom of the bath, or you're a freaking psychopathic murder, murder, hurrah. Who has someone behind here right now? We're gonna fucking trust me. Okay, we're fine. Oh, what the fuck, man? Why you got that in your freaking house? Uh. I, I hate it when doors open to you. The story of the little princess. How nice. And away we go. Oh, well, now the mystery really begins, doesn't it? Four, one, seven, eight. Okay. Dear Diary, today is our fifteenth wedding anniversary. Reginald surprised me with a beautiful bou bouquet of bouquet. Queen's Bouquet. Of flower, of roses, sorry. Their fragrances feel almost surreal. Jeffrey smiled as copying his tiny hands. Reginald took herself for dinner and I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. Whispers echoed in the background, but I pretend not here. Maybe it's just the stress. Mildred. The shadows seemed closer today. Reginald noticed my unease at dinner, but I brushed it off. Jeffrey took his first steps. A milestone had been eagerly waiting. His laughter echoed in the house, drowning out the whispers. I caught glimpses of figures in the corner, but they vanished when I turned the lock. I need to stay strong for my family. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm afraid of, because... Right here? This part? I'm scared in case one time I look at the camera and there's someone here. That might not be. Monster behind the counter. Okay, I probably I can't read that, but Reginald and I had a heated argument today. He doesn't understand. The voices and figures that linger around us. I heard them mocking me, their words. Cutting through my thoughts like a knife. I locked myself in the bathroom to escape that laughter. Original left in frustration, but Jeffrey hugged me. His innocence, a temporary balm to my tortured mind. They follow me, okay. The doctor adjusted my medication. I feel a brief respite from the whispers. Reginald apologized when we talked about getting Jeffrey a puppy. Happiness flickered like a distant star, but as the night fell, the shadows returned, whispering tales of betrayal and deceit. I can't escape them. I hold Jeffrey close, praying his laughter drowns on the voices. Whispers in the shadows won't let go. Reality blurs like watercolors. They follow me. The doctor took out of my prescription again for a moment. The haunting whispers hushed, replaced by an eerie silence. Reginald's hot remorse echoed in the air, and we, and we contemplated adopting a straight car. I clutched my trembling hands around Jeffrey, despite desperate for the warmth of his innocence to drown out the bone chill and resonance of their spectral secrets. 4178.
and I'm trying to unlock it. Okay, I'm guessing I can't unlock it just yet. King item. But I'll just get out now, you know, as soon as you see blood, you just... Okay, so I can run. I'm just trying to have the button bite. I'm just using, like, this on the dual sense. Basement door accessible from the... I don't even get to read that. Don't even get a chance to look at the note either. So we're not allowed to open this, so... Just run, bro. Just get out where you can, you stupid git, man. It's in the middle of nowhere. This woman isn't paranormal. She's just got things wrong with her, man. Things that you shouldn't be looking for. Where have I got a saw for? What am I sawing? Mildred's legs off, I hope. Yeah, so I can't even look at the... Whoa. Alright, that's just... Bad assets. Yeah, so Mildred, yeah, kind of gone, you know. Kind of left your Skyrim bread out in the middle of nowhere, too. What is this? Yeah, close the door. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh. Pencil sharpener. Maybe this is it. Four one eight seven. Maybe this is where the code is meant to be used. Four one seven eight. Sorry. Nope, it's not that one. Bolt cut out of the inventory, thank you. Curious Mildred, what? She wants to keep an eye on you. Why? Why does she want to keep an eye on me, though? Uh, what was she doing outside? Ooh. Take that noise so much. Whoa, 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 whoa. The minions. I don't even get to read what that says, but yeah, yeah, that's what they were—the minions. Of course. Ugh. And shivery. What's that? Half torn photo. Okay. Well, can I not open this? Maybe. No. Okay, well, I'm gonna go in the bedroom now. Mildred, you better not be coming in. 
Gracefield General Hospital, patient named Mildred Bodic Bar Bodkis, date of birth January 15th, 1941. Female, schizophrenia spectrum disorder. Well, that would explain why she's like very scared. Description, medical history, clinical presentation, Mildred started experience, vivid auditory hallucinations and paranoid delusions. She reported hearing multiple voices, often engaged in conversations that seemed external to her. Drones contributing to a heightened sense of anxiety and fear. It's got a feeling of someone like breathing on us. Jesus Christ. Contributing to a heightened sense of anxiety and fear. Her thoughts became increasingly disorganised, affecting her ability to communicate effectively. Mildred's epidemic and occupational function may decline significantly, leading to a disruption in her overall life trajectory. Upon evaluation, Mildred presents with a myriad of positive symptoms associated with schizophrenia, auditory hallucination, persist cranial complex soundscape, those of that fluctuated tone and content, the paranoid delusions often center around themes of persecution, making it challenging for her to trust those around her, disorganized four processes and speak to further complicated communication, requiring a considerable amount of patience and the from both caregivers. And mental health professionals. Social withdrawal is a prominent aspect of Mildred's current state with limited engagement in, in, in personal relationships. Personal hygiene has been neglected, reflecting the challenges that individuals with schizophrenia may face. Maintaining routine activities of daily living, Dr. Edmund Everly. Sally's eyebrow. Those are stories of her, of the Cocom's lipstick, October deals for cheap makeups. Okay. I'm gonna close that. Here we go. Schlapper Turden. Schnabel Persian. Unveiling the mystical beings of Alpine tradition. Introduction. Step into the enchanting world of Alpine folk as we explore the mysterious realm of Sh Schlappershinton. I can't say that. These mystical beings deeply rooted in the culture of tapestry of the Alpine regions bring to life a rich tradition of winter celebrations and ancient beliefs. Whatever the name is, unveiling the mystical beings of Alpine traditions, delve into the captivating lore, history, and significance of these otherworldly figures shedding light on their fascinating role in local customs and festivities. The rich culture of the Alpine region has been shaped throughout history by a my myriad of mythological figures, and among them are the mysterious enemies known as that word. The term that word is derived from the German word Schnabel. Schnabel? Schnabel meaning beak and they are typically represented with masks featuring long beaks and adorned in colourful attire. Origin and evolution, the roots of Schnabel stretch back to ancient pagan traditions in the Alpine regions, communities offering sacrifice of deities and spirits associated with seasonal changes in nature's cycle. Gradually incorporate these traditions into Christian practices. Schnabelton I was going to call it Schnabelton in this evolutionary process became a fusion of ancient pagan symbolisms, symbols and new Christian influences. So, yeah, that's the full page. Rituals and celebrations. Snabbleton, marking their presence on Alpine celebrations, have become set after various rituals and possessions. These events showcase the mesmerizing dances and simple gestures of Snabbleton, captivating onlookers with their long beaked masks and vibrant costumes to symbolize seasonal tradition transitions and play a vital role in, in maintaining a harmonious balance between nature and human existence. As we conclude this deep dive at Schnabelton, mythical figures of the Alps reflect on the profound understanding gained throughout this journey. This book stands as a testament, testament to the re resilience of folklore, urging readers to cherish and preserve this rich tapestry of their culture and heritage, ensuring that the legacy of the Schnabeltons endures for generations to come. So in a way they're kind of like a cryptid, which I absolutely love. Anyone who knows me knows I love cryptids. Oh, right. Treatment plan. Mildred's treatment is comprehensive, involving a collaborative effort from a multidisciplinary mental health team, pharmacotherapy, 
with antipsychotic medications aimed to alleviate the positive symptoms and stabilize her con- cognitive function and regular psychiatric ablutions. Monitor medication efficiency, efficacy, and potential side effects of adjustments if necessary. Cognitive behavioral therapy (CBT) is a crucial component of Mildred's treatment plan, addressing cognitive distortions, enhancing coping mechanisms, and prompting reality testing. Group therapy sessions provide a supporting environment for social interaction and skill building, aiding with gradual reintegration of Emily and all broader community supportive services, including vocational rehabilitation and community outreach programs, are being explored to enhance Mildred's overall quality of life and foster independence. Dr. Edmund Emily. 4781, wasn't it? 4178. Finally, what is it? What's my prize? Needle. Needle, needle, needle. Needle, 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 needle. Ooh, hello. Old family photo. Very good. Jesus Christ, Mudge, you got a freaking lot of mess. And wish you were here, but something. Thankfully, you're not. The time has changed, and the secrets and the shadows are darker than ever. Oh, God. I do not like that one bit. So, why would I use the needle? A needle for the break. Oh, the record player. Thank you, because I would never have thought of that. Okay, now what? Bro, you didn't tell me there was a fucking flashlight in the game. It's like, they don't tell you to run. Cursed family fall. Well, what do you want me? What do you want me to do with it? I suppose I haven't looked in here, so it might be something. Try and scare me all you want. You've got to give me a logical reason. Or, oh, sorry, an actual decent jump scare to actually get me. <sighs> the creators of the game just must want you to suffer like having all these open drawers and actually nothing coming about okay I'm back um I figured it out well I didn't figure it out sorry I looked it up um apparently the, there's a code for this which is 8964 I don't know where the hell the guy found it but this is the other key so that's some actual decent progress Okay, we are going up. What do you hear the whispers in the kitchen? Death, the clutter 
of cutlery and rattling of dishes. It's the feed. It's time feed the floating hunger for your dark dinner day awaits under the feeding flickering light. Okay, I had to get like really close and personal there with the friggin' camera. Ooh. Small key. Don't want to do. Yeah, I had to get real close. Yeah, and I ain't trusting that. That's like some freaking cat. <laughs> Okay, as I was saying, I ain't trusting that because that's some like catnap shit. Like the friggin' red smoke, whatever it's called. Big buff. And I definitely don't trust it even more because of that jump scare. What box we got? Home economics. Right, home economics. Well, it's very hard to see, obviously. Collectic works of Gabriel Hall. Okay, well, I'm not gonna have like a good look at them because like, it's very difficult. Repeat after me. Did bad, did it? It's one for the record repeating the numbers seven five three nine. Nine. We gotta do that. God damn it! Seven three five five three nine. Oh, you're missing a head, eh? Well, I know where a head is. It's in the it's in the bathroom. Today I felt like walking on eggshells again with mom's distant stairs and unsettling whispers. Dad used to say she was different, but now the house echoes with absence of his voice. Overheard mom having conversations with the invisible beings. The normalessly I yearn for has been replaced by surreal nightmares. I miss the days when mom smiled with a distant memory. Phantoms catched mom, 14 of the 3rd, 1960. Maybe that's a code. The darkness inside mom is spreading. She's locked. In her room, obviously oblivious to my attempts to connect. The house feels heavier and Dad's absence is a void that can't be filled. I couldn't... Something, my mother, she watches over the house. She's the... Something, right. Jeffrey's diary. Okay, well, I know where your head is. Burn the ship, maybe? Oh, that's locked away. Sketch my tears with talk if they'll wash away my something. Well, that's someone on a mountain dreaming. Got, get me out of here, I beg you. So, in other words, she basically locked her son in the basement, I'm guessing. Oh, we're going again. What am I going to get? Oh yeah, the doll's head. Can I have? 
I would really like the doll's head, but apparently I'm not allowed it. Oh boy. You know, I thought the one upstairs was worse. You're much worse. Time to make my nightmare. <laughs> okay, now what? I'm feeling good. Mildred Barkett, an ex-nurse, has been diagnosed with schizophrenia. Mildred Barkett, an ex-nurse, is being charged with multiple cases of child kidnapping. Six months later. Police found the dead body of Mildred laying in her bathroom with a knife stabbed in her chest two months after my first visit to her house. They are still investigating if it is suicide or homicide. I had to wait until dust settles down to come back to her place. I have one unfinished business here. I should do my recording from this place and get the hell out of here once done. Wait, why, 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 why are we back? Why is there a goat in the house? And um, why? I think I should clean the sigil magic symbols on the walls. Dirty symbols mixed with blood and goats and goat forces. What? Bro, what? What? What even happened? I think I should clean the sigil magic symbols on the walls. Dirty symbols mixed with blood invoked some occult forces around the house. I heard that the force that magic symbols scattered around the house over the walls. One should be in the basement, one in the bathroom, one in the bedroom, one in the dining room. I first find some products to do the cleaning. Are you fucking joking me? Bro, what? Bro, there's a fucking goat running around. What, now I'll just chill about that goat walking around. Wait. Yeah, first thing to find out is a tiny thing again. I'm gonna. X is left, and that is nice. Yeah. Yeah, one hundred percent. I'm getting fucking speedier, bro. I don't know where cleaning supplies would be. Where? Will... Where, where would clean supplies be? And why is there a goat just chilling downstairs? Kind of scared to go down, to be honest. Make sure it's gone first. I don't know if I should risk it.
What are you going, you little shit? Oh yeah, a claw. Because a cloth is the perfect thing to wipe some sigils off. Oh great, I need to find something else. Of course I do. And what other item would um, you be after? That's fine. Okay, so it just spawns me back down here, that's fine. Okay, it is lagging at a proper friggin' bad frame rate right here, like. So combine with that. I think I'm gonna risk it. Oh motherfucker, get get back, get upstairs. I don't know what's happening. Where's the... Okay. Alright, I just wanted to check to see if the towel was still dirty or not. Maybe I cannot run it. Right, there we go. That should be all the symbols. I've witnessed enough of the tragedy involving Mildred Bartkiss and her haunted house. One thing I've learned as a paranormal investigator is that places like these can definitely induce hallucinations. I'm not certain whether all the entities I've encountered here are real or merely figments of the imagination. Nonetheless, I've gathered valuable insights contributing to the legend of Schnabelbergstein, and it's imperative that I share my findings with the rest of the world. I just want to say, not bad, not a bad game. Right? It's alright for what it is. I mean, this seem like they're trying to do a bit of, um... Oh, I don't know what... I put the... I probably put, I probably put, I probably have put the screenshot up earlier, but... I think it's the Dead of Night. The one with um, Jimmy and the mother and the... The little girl and whatnot, and when you go around the hotel and he just patrols around the hotel and he's like that, he's like stood like around corners and he beats you with a bat. Seems like I try and do that, but um, more like um, walking around because um, in the dead of night, I think it's called. I could be wrong. I hope I'm right. Yeah, uh, it was like a point and click, like you would click the screen, it would move you forward or like left and then you would lock the door and whatnot, you have to find your friends, it was, seemed like a pretty cool game. Um, 
It feels like it's trying to do that, but it doesn't really execute it that well, in my opinion. I don't know what to say. I mean, I think like maybe like two jump scares got us, and that was it. I mean, the ambience, like the constant like doom and those metal scraping. It's a bit confusing, and yes, it did scare us at the start, but then just kind of got used to it. And, um, what the hell was with the goat? Like, there was just no, there was just no indication of why, like... Yes, I know the, the Schlammerdons, or whatever the frig they were called, the beak guys, or women, they... They were nature, but why was there a goat, and why was it just, like, constantly going? It just didn't make any sense. But, um... Overall, I'd give it... Um, I'm gonna say a 5 out of 10. Just because it's not bad, and it's not good, in my opinion, but... That's me. If you guys want to try it for yourselves, it's called Nightgast. Um, it's on PlayStation. It's only like two pounds, so it's not like they were asking for a high amount. So I kind of really bash them that bad for it. Um, I hope you enjoy what you see today. And if you want to see more videos like this, I'll leave links in the description, as always, to other videos I've done by myself or with my best door, Adam. And I hope to see you in the next video I do. Goodbye! <laughs>